Hello friends. So today we would be looking into what is stretch database and we would look this you know with the help of TSQL script. So in my next video you know we I may uh, show you how to enable the stress database from the UI. But for today uh, we would continue with the TSQL script. Right. Let's move ahead. So as usual the agenda would be understanding stretch database the benefits of stretch database, limitations with stretch database, and then a practical demo where I will, I will show you how to enable stretch database and uh, then various DMVs to monitor the stretch database and then how to disable the stretch database. Okay. Uh, for the, for the, uh, there are some prerequisites for the stretch database. If you want to do a POC, right, uh, or if you want to, you know, test yourself to or if you want to try it yourself <clears throat> or uh, practice yourself, uh, you need to have an uh, Azure subscription, all right? Or you need to have at least one Azure subscription and access to that. And you should have a proper, you know, admin permissions to create objects on in that Azure subscription. So this is a, a, a must prerequisite or one of the prerequisite, you know, for practicing the stretch database. Uh, let us understand what is stretch database. A uh, stretch database actually migrates your cold data transparently and securely to the Microsoft Azure Cloud, right? So many a times, you know, uh, there is a need to uh, actually transfer the older data uh, to, you know, to the to, to another place to minimize the size of the table and size of the database, right? Now, one of the alternative to this, this can be, you know, archiving the data. But if you archive the data, right, then again, you know, you will have to do some code changes actually because you know it's not that you will never need that data customer user might need data at some point of time so how to display that data so in that case you know you will have to change a little bit code or maybe a database code or some sort of thing right so that's where you know microsoft has came up with this good new feature called the stretch database which actually migrates your cold data transparently and securely to the microsoft azure cloud right when when can it be you know when you can we should use the stretch database so for example if your table contains only cold data right then entire table can be migrated if your table contains cold and hot data both that is you know the recent data is also there but the legacy data is also there the old data is there but you know it you require that data very uh, very often sorry very very less you require right you don't require that very often right so that's considered as the cold data then that is migrated with the help of a filter function so in that case you know you need to create a filter function which would actually you know bifurcate between the uh, you know uh, hot, uh, hot data and the cold data okay you don't have to change any existing queries and client application if you are you know going through the stretch database then the most one of the advantage is that you don't have to change any existing queries or any client application it's it's asynchronous and it's you know a very very beautifully handled by uh, microsoft no changes to be done in connection string as well so you don't have to you know uh, worry about your connection string changes also and the best part is that whenever if at all if at all it requires then you know this data migration can be paused you know to troubleshoot any problems any changes or and so on so that can be paused and restarted again so this is a very brief about you know what is a stretch database and when you can use that. Uh, there are several benefits, but you know, so I have listed down some. So there are mainly the benefits contents provide cost effective av availability of the uh, cold data, right? So basically, you know, uh, unlike typical cold data storage, your data is always online and available to query. Cost effective availability. That means, you know, uh, see in archive, either you will have to write some uh, code do the changes or then you know you will have to give some effort to uh, you know get that data right but in this case it is always available okay you can provide a longer data retention timeline so this is also one of the benefit that you know you can provide a longer data retention timeline without breaking the uh, you know uh, bank for large tables like customer old history okay and you can get benefit from the low cost of azure rather than scaling expensive on premise storage so you know uh, when it, as in when uh, your data grows it may be possible that you know you need to fit some more hard disk or more storages and all such so you you are removed from this uh, uh, you are removed from this uh, because azure again comes with a you know a very 
low cost storage availability okay right uh, so these are these were some benefits uh, of course with the benefits uh, then you have the limitations of the uh, uh, stretch databases there are some limitations also that uniqueness is not enforced for you know unique primary key constraint in azure migrated table now if your table whatever the table you are using can you know contains the unique or primary key then that would not the uniqueness would not enforce on to the migrated table again right in, on your original table on the local environment again it would be you know uniqueness would be enforced but on migrated table it would not be enforced you cannot have the dml operations on migrated data you cannot perform any dml operations on migrated data uh, if your tables are enabled with a file stream data or change tracking or cdc right if you are using any such things for you know auditing purposes then also uh, you cannot basically uh, you know use that table uh, to be the candidate of for the stretch uh, database or the stretch table certain data types if they are used in the tables like timestamps sql variant xml geography right then also you cannot use uh, you know you can you cannot enable the stretch database and even if your columns are using always encrypted feature from microsoft then also you cannot uh, you know uh, use this uh, stretch enable you can't create index for a view that includes stretch enable tables right you can cannot create so these are these are some uh, basic uh, limitation of course there are certain more limitations but you know these are some uh, major limitations uh, due to which you cannot uh, enable the uh, stretch database right so as usual as you know that you know i generally don't like to you know uh, repeat or go through the theory part theory part because practical is uh, you know a very useful and one can understand more clearly when we do the practice so let us see how to you know enable and what are the prerequisites and everything so i have you know already pre created my vm right from where you know which you, i will i will be using as a local environment and then i have also created an azure database uh, on the from the azure portal so if you can see here uh, there are two servers connected one is by uh, you know this stretch demo this is from vm and stretch db server this is from uh, my azure pass environment okay so this uh, database we will be considering as our local environment right so uh, let us see if you can see here currently uh, there is no database present okay so let me create a database called stretch demo onto the environment right so my database is created and uh, okay so uh, the first requirement that uh, you know to enable any uh, to do a stretch database or to enable a stretch database on a database and to you know uh, actually use the table from that database you will have to create a master key and a uh, database scope credential which would be used to you know uh, which would be actually used uh, for enabling this stretch database okay so this is my master key i am creating a master key here and this is my uh, database scope credentials you can see here stretch demo credential okay now i am creating one table into this database so let me create a employee table and i am putting some records into this and then uh, let us see what what is inserted so now you can see here basically in this we are going to see in this demo you know uh, we we are not going to entirely uh, migrate the table because we don't have that so what we have done is we have actually uh, created one column called employee lab so, you know one is uh, that employee is left so what we will do uh, we would migrate all the data for the employee who are you have left the organization right we would consider that as a cold data right okay before that let me show you so here in this table if you can see basically i have taken this row version as a timestamp column and you know that this was the one of the limitation okay the timestamp column cannot be you know if your if your table is having a timestamp column then you cannot enable that uh, table as a in a stretch database so let me uh, you know how to from ui of course the whole process of ui we are going to see it into the next next demo here you know i'm just showing you uh, that from where you can enable this and uh, let us see if it permits us to create a you know a stretch database uh, for this timestamp column okay so let if you right click on the database go to the task and there is an option called stretch and you can say enable okay 
from the ui spring you can start doing you know selecting your tables but now you can see here so basically whatever tables right if all the rules are validated then then those tables would be you know uh, actually available for uh, using in our stretch uh, tables right but even here you can see even if i click here right nothing happens and there is an error so let us see what is error this table cannot be configured for stretch database stretch because it does not meet the eligibility criteria right and this is itself an eligibility criteria right when when it says eligibility criteria means basically the timestamp column is present so this table cannot be you know used as a stretch table okay right so so this was you know this was just to show you the error now let me create uh, the table again back without this timestamp column right and then let me show you so i have created a table the same record i have inserted but this time if you can see we have removed that timestamp column uh, let me refresh this and now if you go and see stretch enable next see automatically you know it allows me to click here and it doesn't give any error this is some warning that employee id column in a table uh, employee is part of a primary key or unique key index unique keys and primary key can only be enforced on the rows of the local database table right so this one of the limitation or uh, you know we saw that uh, you cannot enforce the uniqueness of a primary key right on a stretch table that is the migrated table that but that can be uh, you know uh, enforced on the local environment so this is just a warning and from here onwards you can uh, you know uh, if you go further then it will ask you to sign into your azure account but we are you know we are not going by this route this time right so let me cancel this okay now once so till now what we have done uh, we i have i have shown you that why time you know with the help of time step you cannot create a stretch table right and we have created a uh, database core credential and a master key okay now uh, let me create a function. Let us create one alter function, uh, one function, right, called f and let employees. We are passing the employee left uh, column, so this column, if you can see, and then returning one if that employee left is equal to one. So, you know, for this function, we would pass uh, the value of the employee left uh, column, and then if it is one, then it will, you know, uh, it will return us a one, right? So, let me create this function okay so this function is being created now the main part comes in okay to how to enable to enable stretch database you need to create with the help of tsql script you need to you know use alter database and then this is our stretch demo a database name and then a set a function that remote data rq is equal to on okay right that remote data rq is equal to on and here you need to specify the database name so what is what is our database you know past database name so what is the uh, database uh, name of our past uh, database that is stretch db svr dot database dot net right let me copy that give me a second okay and we need to change this here so this is our server name for the past database right and the Credentials. Credentials, as I uh, told you, we have already created here with us the database core credential, stretch demo credential, the same credential uh, we are using. Okay. So if you do this, if you execute this query, oops. Okay. See, it is giving me an error that access to the remote data archive has been disabled, right? So from the uh, from the configuration setting, you need to enable this. Okay. Let me get the script for that. I just forgot to put the script here. Uh, give me a second. So this way, you need to actually see. You need to enable this. So when I do this, what I'm doing, I am actually enabling remote data RQ. And then after, if you execute this statement, then it would be no. It would be success. 
okay now as we have enabled this it will take some time you know so let us uh, wait you know uh, for, a, for a while i would stop the video and then once it is enabled uh, i would again come back okay till then uh, let me stop this video okay so now you can see you know it take, it took some time and after you know 7 minutes and 33 seconds uh, it came back now if i enable uh, if i uh, expand this you can see currently there is no database and as soon as i refresh this you can see this database right which means that you know the extension to our stretch demo has been created onto the azure environment right so now uh, by uh, you know the data from my table would get migrated here so once we enable the stretch database we need to now identify the table right and we need to have that alter table statement so here we have already identified that you know we are going to use employee table right and here as you said that set on while enabling the database you said set that data archive on similarly you can here again with the table also you need to specify that remote data archive is equal to on right and filter predicate see here this is the place where you know you need to filter out the data as uh, uh, hot data and the cold data so what we are doing with the help of this filter predicate we are using this function now as you know in this function what we have done that you know for the employees whose uh, you know left employee uh, column is one we are considering as a cold data right and the migration state outbound now there are you know three migration state one is outbound means your synchronization is happening from a local environment to azure environment inbound means you know whenever you want to stop the synchronization right stretch stretching of the table then in that case you can bring back the data from azure environment to your local environment of course in real scenario this might not be possible because huge huge data has been already transferred to the uh, azure environment and the pause state means synchronization is stopped and can be resumed whenever required right so here currently what we need to do is we need to transfer the data from our local environment to an azure environment so we are specifying outbound okay as soon as we do this right our uh, you know the configuration part is over and now you know uh, the data would be migrated right uh, whenever you know uh, the status looking at the status of the the table or the column in that table the employee left uh, column uh, the migration would automatically start right uh, you, you will you will even uh, you know you will not feel that you know the data has been migrated right so now how to check this okay let me uh, enable this execution plan and when i execute this select star from employee you can see in an execution plan that a remote query operator is being you know added here which means if you query a whole data right and as we saw that this data contains you know three rows one is considered as cold data because employee left column is one and another two rows are uh, you know the local data right so with the help of this execution plan you can see that you know data is some of the data is being bring, you know brought back from an azure environment and that's where this remote query uh, operator is being added if you give a filter of employee left is equal to zero right and if you now see execution plan you can see the remote query is not being added here in an execution plan which means the data is being retrieved you know from the local environment itself right because all our data with uh, flag, employee left flag is equal to one hour on an azure environment but in this case we don't require that okay right so basically this is the way you can check okay another way to you know check whether your you know configuration is perfect and you know how much data is on the local environment how much data is on the azure environment right there is a monitoring tab right and there are some dmvs also so let us see first monitoring tab when you right click on the stretch demo uh, table uh, database go to the task go to the stretch we need to refresh this because it has not updated the status task then stretch and now you can see your monitor table monitor option is enabled when you click on the monitor option it will uh, let us wait for a second it will actually uh, you know uh, get all the status for us
right and now you can see here okay it will it will come uh, within a second or two see now it has came back right and you can see the database on azure server this is the same database if you can see here right and on my local server it is a stretch demo so basically synchronization is happening from my local environment to an azure environment right so all these configuration settings and server name and everything is there and on the below grid you can see how many tables are being used into this stretch database so currently we have only one table right migration state is outbound which means you know the data is transferred from local to an uh, azure environment total eligible rows in a table are three local rows are three two and rows in azure are one can you see this right so basically right this gives the table wise information that how many rows are on the local environment how many rows are on an azure environment and as you know currently we have two rows on local environment and one row on azure environment and below that there is a grid which gives you the uh, basically information about the synchronization when when it got synchronized uh, you know and if there was any error the severity of the error and the state of the error right so this is the one way uh, to monitor or to check you know about the health of your uh, stretch database another is like there are certain dmvs so if we execute the first dmv it will just give us the name of the archive database so basically you can see again here the same database name if we actually execute the second dmv then this gives us the name of the uh, basically the filter function right the name of the remote database the migration uh, you know direction so it is uh, outbound and the filter function being used okay here and then this is the migration status which we saw if you can see here this is the migration at what time basically see it, if you can see it, so many records are created so it continuously keep uh, basically you know uh, synchronizing okay so this way you can monitor these are the three dmvs you can monitor from your ui also so this was until now what we have saw that you know how to enable right what is the filter function how to enable the stretch database how to you know use the table into that stretch database right now if you want to disable this again you know you need to alter the uh, table statement so here now you can see it is showing me migration state is equal to inbound so now because we want to stop and here there are not much number of rows so we are you know getting all the rows from azure environment back to our local environment okay so let me execute this this is done right and then alter database stretch demo set remote data archive is equal to off so we are actually disabling this uh, a stretch database uh, or the stretching onto a stretch demo database on the local environment so when i execute this it is it has been disabled and now if you see if you execute this query now you can see the execution plan if you remember so the you know when the stretch was enabled in my select star from employee as a whole query it was adding an operator for remote query but now here it doesn't actually add the uh, operator of remote query and still we have three uh, records right which means the record from azure environment was again copied back to the local environment okay so the execution plan shows that right guys so this was a demo for stretch database hope uh, you liked it right so please please subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed so that you know whenever i actually upload you know new videos you will get the notification immediately because i would keep you know uploading the several uh, new new videos for different different topics right and also if you like this please uh, you know click on the like button and share this with your colleagues so that every can everyone can you know uh have have this knowledge of the stress database right so bye for now uh, meet you next time with next topic